Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Nungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Uh, thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep supporting us. We really appreciate. So today I'm going to be reacting to amazing, I think, Reverend Professor Keith Ward on Muhammad as a prophet of God. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. What do you as a, a Christian theologian make of the prophethood of Muhammad? Um, do you have any thoughts about that? I know oh, you do. yes, that's the okay. thoughts about that. <laughs> uh, I do think uh, that Muhammad was a genuine prophet of God and that he was raised up by God and that the Quran is uh, in some way an expression of uh, God's uh, revelation. So I do uh, think that. Um, I I am a Christian. I mean, I'm a follower of Jesus, so that I do. I, clearly, I'm not a Muslim, but I would. I think uh, I'm totally opposed to people who misunderstand Islam as a uh, rejection of Christianity. I think that is not true. I think uh, Islam would, it, as I see it, and Muhammad, I, I don't think he knew much about Christianity. I would have thought he, he was opposed to some of the views of Christians that he knew about. <laughs> and I think that's true. But I don't hold any of those views, in fact, and none of my colleagues do either. So, um, there are differences. I mean, there, there are clear differences, but I, I I, I think he was a gen Muhammad was a genuine prophet uh, of one God, who who stand against uh, a sort of uh, popularized Christian version of there being three gods or see three different things in God was correct. He was justified in this. So I, so I, I uh, look for an increase. Here. I see the difference between a school of islam and a school of christianity as about the same sort of difference as a difference between me and conservative evangelical christians mm -hmm. <laughs> that there are differences i can live with those i can respect those who differ from me uh and i think uh we have to say i i'm not infallible so i'm not saying that i know that i'm right uh, to use an expression from the Quran, God will decide who is right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But you have to go along with your own feelings. So so I I follow Jesus because I think he was a human expression of the of wisdom and love of God. And the, the main message of that is that God loves without exception everyone. There are Christians who don't believe that. There are Muslims who do believe that, right? But wouldn't use words like incarnation or uh, the, the, uh, trinity, etc. Some certain forbidden terms. But if you uh, accept that religious language is fluid and that all of us are unable to comprehend the nature of God precisely, um, I think Islam and Christianity shouldn't really be regarded as two different religions. I think they're two different ways of approaching God. Mm. And I'm nearer to many Muslims than I am to many Christians. So that's a very, very interesting answer. Uh, can I just ask, ask uh, this question? It's re really on behalf of, I, I know some of the Muslim viewers, audience will want me to ask this. Um, Muslims also have a very high regard for Jesus, clearly, yes. uh, and see him as a, a, an incredibly wonderful human being who expressed the love of God to the outcast and the sinners and so on and and, and that's all wonderful so y y your uh, admiration for uh jesus is shared by muslims too or they may be expressed slightly differently of course um yeah. he's, he's not seen as an icon into god that we pray through of course um but but um th th they would wonder the question would be why aren't you a muslim if you accept <laughs> in, in in that mindset if you accept that muhammad is a prophet of god and you believe in one god and god sent jesus that is virtually a definition of what a Muslim believes anyway. Um, so they would ask, why aren't you a Muslim? And, and, and saying you're a Christian is not an answer because for the reasons you mentioned, the Muslims can already encompass that understanding as well, that he is someone who expresses the love of God to you in a, and in the wisdom of God in a very special way. You know, many Sufi yeah. Muslims could say, yeah, absolutely. We agree with you, but we're Muslims. Um, so the question is, why, why aren't you a Muslim? That's the question. 
Well, it's like asking me why I'm an Anglican or an Episcopalian rather than a Methodist. Um, <laughs> because that's the way of thinking of God, which has, I feel, demanded my loyalty. Uh, so it's a bit like saying, why do you uh, prefer one view of philosophy to another view of philosophy? And you say, well, because uh, that, that's the way that seems right to me, that attracts me, that demands my loyalty. And once your loyalty is demanded, well, I say this for a Muslim too, of course, you stay true to what has revealed God to you. So I say, all right, the end. Why I'm a Christian is because I have personally experienced, or I believe that I have personally experienced, the presence of Jesus Christ actually um, affecting what I feel and think and do. Uh, so I have no alternative. You know, this is <laughs> this is the this is the person who has revealed God to me personally. But I so I'm not denying that Muslims can. can uh, have God revealed to them in a different way, and I honor that way, but it's not my way. That's not, I would like to try to understand it more, that's true, and uh, be, be much more um, in affinity with the Muslim way of thought, but um, it's, it's just not the way that it's happened for me. It's not my, it's not my, not part of my autobiography. So no, I think, yeah. I just want me to say, a supplementary question to that, it just occurred to me. Uh, you, you acknowledge that Muhammad is a prophet of God. In your in your knowledge of your colleagues in in Christian theology globally, um, how widespread is that view? Do you think um, that that Muhammad was a prophet of God um, amongst your academic colleagues who are the Christian theologians? I think it's almost universally accepted. I mean, as you know, uh, even I suppose Roman Catholics are on the whole more conservative than I would be as an Episcopalian. Um, but they uh, now officially believe that uh, Islam is a revelation of God. So, and that, that's Vatican II, an official declaration. So I think that was, my colleagues would undoubtedly say that. I mean, there are lo I know lots of Christians wouldn't, but. No, well, know, it, that's why I meant theologians, particularly, that those who I are. Know. Are, theologians, uh, I think, would, would all um, uh, accept. Uh, but you know the tr yeah well if you're asking the question how influential are theologians on most christians the answer is okay. not in the slightest <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, no i, I there, there's some new input yeah anyway but that, that, that's interesting that, that that will come as quite a a revelation um and a quite a shocking thing to say that uh, in your experience most of your academic christian theological colleagues who are not catholics would actually see Muhammad as a prophet of God. Yes, yes, I think that's true. That's, that's really remarkable. Uh, th th that I didn't know actually. So it was a genuine question of mine. Um, that's interesting. So that that suggests a certain openness to other faiths and uh, and overcoming these cultural barriers and looking beyond our own comfort zones and and recognizing patterns of commonality and similar spiritual dynamics and spiritual realities yes. across the boundaries between religions and theologians today are well equipped to do that in our world in our global village perhaps yes. um, yeah. mm -hmm. that, uh, I, I know you will know the work of Cantwell Smith who was uh, uh, the founder of the Harvard Center for the study of world religions uh, and he was an expert on Islam that was his scholarly field yeah. uh, and he he actually recommended that we should stop using the word religion as though there were different blocks of huge beliefs which everybody who's a christian has this block and everybody who's a muslim has that block and we just should talk about ways of faith and ways of approaching god and um i'm, I'm in sympathy with that i think talking about a religion you know, some of my some of the christians i know don't believe anything that i believe <laughs> except they use the word jesus but they're talking about somebody else <laughs> I think I mean, this bespeaks of a, a yawning chasm, shall we say, between your world in that sense uh, of the academic theologians and certainly many in the pew, say in the United States and, and um, Africa and other parts of the world where they are exclusivist 
to the absolute. You know, only I hear this all the time. Only Jesus will will lead you to God. And I say, well, okay, so Moses didn't know Jesus. Is he damned? Because you've got to believe in Jesus to be saved. Well, what about all the prophets? They didn't know. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what the answer they give to that. But it's a very uh, binary, absolutist, exclusive worldview, which is a million yeah. miles from your own, of course. And it's a million miles away from uh, saying that Jesus is the savior of the world, not of one little group within the world. Uh, and of course, people like me, and again, most most of my academic colleagues would in general agree with this. Uh, we would say that the savior of the world is, of course, God. Hmm. And it's only insofar as Jesus mediates God that Jesus is the savior of the world. And we believe he does mediate God, so we can say that. But we're not excluding everybody else because God wants to save the whole world. And I'm very clear about that. And uh, I think some of my Muslim friends, and I have um, been, I have a close association with the uh, Oxford Islamic Center. And I think uh, they, most of them, I think, believe that too. Yeah. Um, but um, I just want to say thank you very much indeed um for your time uh, and um your yeah. it was really really fascinating and i know uh many muslims um will be very interested in what you've said uh both in clarifying because we're, we're often used to uh fundamentalist christians having a go um yeah. and to hear yeah. an alternative voice uh, of which your voice is certainly um more uh more representative of christian christianity i think than the harsh extremism that we hear of um it's good that muslims hear this uh and and you're more openness to, to uh, uh islam as well to be frank so um yeah thank you very much for i actually think paul that until um all the the major developed spiritual faiths of the world and i include india and buddhism uh, and forms of hinduism in this too until they come to a greater understanding of their own historical perspective and development and and shared goals and their differences as well and but have a sympathetic appreciation of that until that happens uh, uh, we're not going to adequately perceive the truth of our own tradition that we belong to yes. yeah. excellent well thank you very much and uh, i'm going to end the discussion now and uh, and um, thank you, everyone, for listening in. And please leave your comments and your thoughts uh, as well. Until next time. Thank you. I do think uh, the Muhammad was a genuine prophet of God. I do think uh, the Muhammad was a genuine prophet of God. Uh, this was actually a great listen. And it raised one question in mind when these guys were having that conversation. And my question is, is it possible to believe in more than one religion? Why I take something good from this religion, something good from this religion, and something good from this religion and another religion. It can be one, it can be two, three, four, five different religions. I'm picking the goods in it. Is it possible for me to live such a life where I pick only the good parts of it and help them create a certain lifestyle that I live by? Also, understanding the fact that I'm still following one God. I'd love for someone to answer me that. Otherwise, this was pretty amazing to listen to and quite straightforward. And yeah, but if there's any other points that were discussed in this video that you guys would love to talk about, comment down below. I'll be sure to reply to your comments. If there's anything you want me to yap to, let me know down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.